Welcome back. We're going to be playing some Final Fantasy IV. And what I want to do is I want to demonstrate every summon that you can get in the Pixel Remaster. We're going to talk about how to get each one as well. So we're going to go through the moon interior. We're going to start off with Goblin. Goblin casts Goblin Punch, which attacks one enemy. To get this spell summon, you have to farm goblins. <laughs> Clearly not the strongest one in the game. Uh, you have to farm goblins outside of Baron, and it's a rare drop to get the actual goblin item. Uh, eventually, you know, you can use sirens to get it, or you can just walk around. It's not that hard of a one to get, um, but once you have it, then you can summon goblin whenever you want. Wow, I can't believe two tornadoes happened there. Let's go ahead and gear up. Okay. So there are a few different categories of summons in Final Fantasy IV. There's monster summons, which is goblin. There's the ones that come automatically with Rydia. And then there are ones that are like side quest summons. And let's see. Am I, is that all of them? So there are side quest summons, monster summons, monster drop summons, and ones that just come with Rydia. Yeah, I think that's all of them. So that's Bahamut, which is the strongest summon in the game, and that you get through a side quest. So on the moon, there's another dungeon. It, it starts with a kind of a donut shape. And if you go into that dungeon, eventually you'll find the God of Summons. And if you beat Behemoth, and the way to beat Behemoth is you use Reflect on yourself so that his Mega Flare, um, his Mega Flare doesn't actually hit you. It gets reflected back to him. And it's so powerful. It only takes 60 MP. It does take a little bit to summon, but it's well worth the MP investment. So Bahamut does Mega Flare. I mean, look at that. That's just amazing. Look at the damage there. Almost max. And that one character, that, that one monster that didn't do the max damage, has massive magic defense. So very strong. Definitely the strongest. So that was a side quest one. Let's see. What's the next one? I think the next one is Chocobo. So Chocobo, when Rydia was a child, and when Rydia came back and saved you, um, she already has Chocobo loaded. So you don't need to do anything special to get Chocobo. Chocobo's so cute. Kick, 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 kick. Oh. Oh, did I just activate like a magical summon counter? I think I did. Okay, let's do one more Chocobo. So the next one is Bomb, and Bomb is another uh, Bomb, or it's another enemy drop summon. So you have to find a specific enemy. There are two enemies on the moon that can drop the Bomb item, so you can learn how to summon Bomb. The two, the two enemies you're looking for are the Balloon and the Hand Grenade. What's cool about Bomb is however much HP Rydia has is how much damage the Bomb in, in flicks, which is really cool. Um, you can farm like silver apples or golden apples and bring Rydia's HP up all the way to max if you really want. Here she has almost 6,000 uh, HP. Bomb is a very fast summon, almost immediate. And so it's gonna inflict the same amount of damage. Oh yeah, so she had 5,588 there. Very cool. So I think Bomb has the potential to be the best summon because it's so fast, it's so cheap, 10, 10 MP, and if you brought Midia's HP up to max, I mean, that would just decimate any monster. So we've done Chocobo, Goblin, the Hammett, Bomb. Let's see, what else do we have? Ooh, potential for some ribbon farming here. 
So the next one is Cockatrice. I think that's how you say it. This one you can farm out of uh, Mysidia. There are three Cockatrice that you can use to summon with a, a Siren. And this one is really cool because it casts a pretty high effective accuracy petrification spell. So it doesn't actually do damage. If it hits, which this one hit, which is awesome, it just instantly petrifies the enemy and then kills the enemy because a petrified enemy uh, is dead. So I'm really impressed with this one. I think that it takes, what, 15 MP, so it's fairly inexpensive. And against the right monster, just like these Dark Sages, it's extremely effective. This is kind of like the hidden one. I, I don't think it's as versatile as like the bomb because some monsters have a lot of magic evasion or maybe even just immunity against the petrification, so it doesn't always work. But if you know which monsters you can use it on here, for example, the Dark Sage, you know, 15 MP, that is a really cheap victory. Let's see, I wanna see what break costs. So break is the magic equivalent where really you just summons break. It's 12 MP, so it's a little bit cheaper MP wise, but from, I don't know the exact numbers, but the like accuracy of Cockatrice versus Break, Cockatrice feels like double the accuracy. It's just so much better. On to the next one. So Mind Flayer is another monster summon. You can find this one inside of the Troia Magnetic Cave. And you can use Sirens to summon these, or you can just um, walk around randomly and try and get them. I would definitely recommend using Sirens, but it's a pretty cool one. It's actually not doing a ton of damage against this enemy right now, but it has a cool, I don't know what kind of like element it's using, but I almost feel like it's like psychic element. I don't think it's fire. I don't think it's ice. I don't know, it, but it's a super cool one. Just feels like you're turning their mind into jelly. Kind of a crazy one. Oh, a little, mur little murderer. Okay, so then, Mind Flayer from the Magnetic Cave. The next one is Mist Dragon. So, I don't think Mist Dragon came with Rydia when she was a child. But when she was a grown-up and she saved you from Golbez, I think she just came loaded with Mist Dragon. And this is pretty cool, too. So, Mist Dragon actually deals damage based on their caster's HP. So, this is like Bomb. But instead of Bomb being a single target, Mist Dragon is against all targets. So here I would expect 5,941. Yeah, so that's a pretty cool thing. So you can always kind of anticipate an exact number. And so if a monster has a really high magical defense, you can predict, you can just bypass any magical defense with uh, the Mist Dragon. It's pretty cool. Just super consistent. Another reason why you could farm those apples, if you got max uh, life, you could do bomb for a single target or mist dragon for all targets for max damage, if you had max life. It's not the max HP, it's the current HP. But still, I mean, that by the time you did all that farming, I mean, you'd be unstoppable. <laughs> be crazy. Mist breath. It is a cool one. It's a good callback to the uh, one of your first bosses. I think it might be the first boss, which is pretty cool. Going deeper into the moon here. Lunar subterrain. We have a gold dragon. All right, what's next? We have Sylph. So to get Sylph, there's actually a few important steps. So Sylph can be found in the Underworld, and it's a side quest. It doesn't come preloaded. To get Sylph, you have to first go to the Sylph Cave, which is in the upper left of the Underground, and you have to go through all of the different layers of the Underground Dungeon. I think it's called the Sylph Cave. And at the end, you'll find Yang, who's unconscious. And Yang, you know, Yang will be sleeping. Well, you have to find that Yang's sleeping and then go back to where Yang is from and find Yang's wife 
And Yang's wife will give you like a pot or a pan or something that like she uses to wake him up. And then you have to bring that item back into the underworld, all the way back to the Sylph place and use that on Yang and wake up Yang. Once you wake up Yang, then the Sylphs are like, oh, thank you so much for waking him up. We were just keeping track of him. Now that you woke him up, let you can summon us whenever you want. And you don't have to do any fights. It's just uh, kind of going through that dungeon two times and then going to Yang's wife. But this is pretty cool. It casts Whisper Wind. It uh, deals damage, but then it restores the HP to all your allies. So it's like kind of stealing. It's like drain, but for everybody. And I think the damage is divided by five. Yeah, so about 2,500 divided by five, about 500 apiece. So that's kind of a cool switcheroo summon. Let's see, what's next? Mm -hmm. So Ifrit comes preloaded when she returns. You don't have Ifrit um, when she's a child, but when she comes back, you get it. And then this is a uh, fire damage. I don't think that these dragons has fire absorption, but they might have fire resistance. I mean, it does look cool. Yeah, not a ton of damage. And looks like we encountered a magic counter, which is not great for us. Let's do Ifrit one more time, then we'll do Shiva and Rama. Or Ramu? I don't know. I'm not sure how to pronounce all these names. <clears throat> but I want to learn, so if I mispronounce them, let me know. I mean, that's just it's a cool one. Ifrit is a classic one. Almost in all of the Final Fantasy games, in most of them anyway. Okay, so the other elemental summons did come with Rydia, the basic elementals. So she came with Ifrit, Shiva, Rama, and I think in this one she actually came with Titan as well. So not when she was a child. She summoned Titan, so you couldn't use it in a battle, but she summoned Titan when she was at... Oh, I think she may have had Titan. Okay, I think she actually had Titan as a kid. I think she had Chocobo and Titan. Does that seem right? Can someone fax check me on that? I'm pretty sure she had Titan as a child. But then she came back and saved us, and then she came with uh, Ifrit, Shiva, and Ramu. Rama. Ram Rama? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, so let's do Shiva. So Shiva has Diamond Dust, which is pretty cool. So that's like the classic Ice Summon. Whenever I think of Shiva, I think of Final Fantasy X. There was such a cool Shiva Aeon in that one. Yeah, so cool. And she does pretty good damage. These are cool dragons. It's a cool design. Okay, so we did Ifrit, we did Shiva. Let's try Ramu. Rama? Oh man, I'm getting the hankering for Final Fantasy IX. All these summons putting me in the mood. Because the I think of all of them. Oh, well, Final Fantasy X, this story really revolves around the hands, too. Ten and nine. Seven, they're kind of just put in there. I guess this one, ha yeah, I would say those two storylines revolve a lot around the summons. Maybe 10 actually more than 9 because you go Aeon to Aeon. And the whole point is like stopping the cycle. But 9, it's all about like these weapons of mass destruction. So it's close, but I would actually say 10 is more about them just, just by like a half of a degree or a maybe one degree. Who is Zeus's wrath? Sweet. <laughs> That's funny. I got I was using Rama or whatever and I got the little reward of a lightning item. Was I using lightning on a lightning monster? Oh boy. Alright, we're going deeper in here. Oh, I think this one does doom. Boy. So let's see. So Titan Oh, well, Titan is Earth magic. It's not going to do anything against this floating one because it's Earthquake damage. 
does earthquake damage against all enemies. Well, not if it's a floating enemy. I guess we'll just miss a, a fight here. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't even do the animation because it was a miss. Okay, well, let's move on then. How much can you take before you... Am I going to die from doom? No, I don't think so. I am max level and I have adamant armor on everyone. I have ribbon on at least two people. I think maybe three people. So I don't, I'm not super concerned with dying here. Of course, then I'm going to die, right? As soon as you say you're not concerned about dying, then you die. Okay, now let's do some Titan. This uh, costs 40 MP, so I think it's a little bit expensive. It's not, to me, it's not the best uh, spell. I think when you don't have other options, it's good, but, you know, 40 MP, it's a little bit pricey, and I, I just don't feel like it's super strong. I mean, I'm max level. Yeah, look, I was max level. I have massive stats, and, you know, whoa, self-destruct 9,000. Wow. You know, maybe I should summon Ashura because Edge is dead. Edge is dead. Let's do another one. All right, Titan. Causes Earthquake that damages all enemies. There are certain places in the game where Earthquake is very effective, but I don't know if the moon is one of them. Yeah, it's just not super strong. And I, I feel like the dragons have some magical defense, but it's not its not crazy. Alright, we're going to give Titan a rest. So Odin, this is a side quest one. You have to first obtain Ashura and Leviathan, which we'll get to how to get that. Once you have Leviathan, then you can go to Baron. And under the Eastern Tower, there's a staircase that goes underneath. And it's the real king of Baron that was killed by one of the elemental fiends. And if you... So he'll be like, you obtained Leviathan, now you can challenge me. And if you win that fight, then you get Odin. Um, which is a pretty cool thing. That, like, the king of Baron was actually, like, a good guy. But he was just murdered and a puppet was put in his place. But... Uh, Odin casts death on all the characters, but I think this dragon might be immune to death. So let's see if we can find three of those, uh, like, witches, or what, what were they called? I don't think they were actually witches. Oh, they're not witches. They're called Dark Sages, and we found them. So I'm hoping with their magical evasion, we can hit some of them, or all of them, with Odin. So here we go, 45. He was proud. Now Edge is just taking a little nap. He's just a little tired. It's okay. Ninjas need their rest. Sand is taken. Yes, yeah, so we showed Odin. And it looks like we got all three. That's awesome. So Dark Sage, a great one to hit with uh, Odin. Yeah, that's a classic one. Oh man, there are so many cool Final Fantasies where Odin like comes in and it's just like a, a crazy moment. So, I want to take a little moment here to talk about this blue dragon. So, blue dragon um, absorbs quite a bit of elements. So, I'm going to do fire guy here against the blue dragon intentionally. <laughs> and blue dragon's going to absorb it. So, blue dragon absorbs fire elemental damage. Also, I'm going to do holy. Blue Dragon also absorbs Holy Elemental Magic. Blazaga. Blue Dragon absorbs Blazaga. You know, I don't know about Thunder. Let me try Thunder. This is an experiment. I don't know where it's going to land. This is a very interesting thing that, like, it's important to know what elements... Oh, this absorbs Thunder, too. Okay, great. So, the description... For, oh, I'm out of MP? Oh, no. Okay, hold that thought. 
The description for these summons are important to make sure that you apply the right element for what you're fighting. So if I did Ifrit, which does fire damage, you can see it's in the description, deals fire damage to all enemies. Okay, great. Well, fire damage is actually absorbed by this enemy. So you don't want to do that, you know, in an actual battle, right? But the description for Bahamut, I think, is inaccurate. Because look at this. Behemoth says Mega Flare, which deals major damage to all enemies with a blast of heat. Blast of heat to me sounds like fire damage, but it's not fire damage. I think it's non elemental, like flare. I know it says Mega Flare, so it's like big flare, but flare is kind of like fire. But while this monster absorbs fire damage, it doesn't absorb Behemoth. So Bahamut is definitely a different element than fire. It's kind of an interesting thing here. It's good to know what's what elements your summons are. And Bahamut is not fire. I don't know if it actually has non-elemental or if there's something else like explosive or something like that, but we know it's not fire. And we know that the blue dragon cannot absorb it. All right, what else do we have? We have... We did Odin. So Ashura does one of three things. Hiraga, Protect, or Life. To get Ashura in the underground... Let's see, can we get a Life here? Can we bring Edge back? Oh, we got Protect. Okay, well, Protect's pretty good. To get Ashura, you have to go into the other ground, into the land of the summons. No, re no prerequisites required, which is really cool. Um, once you're in the underground, you get all the way down, you have to go into the library, and then there's like this, oh, not quite hidden staircase, but it's a random staircase. Oh, it looks like we've got Kiraga there, which is cool. It's funny, I need the life one, but I'm not getting it. And inside the library, there's this other hidden room. You'll see two people, the king and queen of the land of summons, the land of the monsters. And if you talk to them, you can fight Ashura first. And then if you win that fight, you get Ashura. I'm not actually a huge fan of Ashura as a, as a move. Here I'm trying to get a life. I think it just would have been easier for me to cast life or use a phoenix down. I mean, what is that, four or five times? I just want life, please. It seems like a Hail Mary if you, like, somehow Riddy is the last one alive, which seems really random. Oh, no, Kiraga. <laughs> My luck is horrible right now. I don't know how they decide what to do here. Can I please have a life? Nope, can't get it. Well, one of the moves is a life, so you can see the frustration with trying to use Ashura. It's not for me. But once you beat Ashura and get that summon, then you have the opportunity to beat Leviathan. Uh, and Leviathan's like, oh, you beat Ashura? Okay, great, you can beat, you can fight me. And Leviathan is the only, I think, the only magic spell or summon that has water damage. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's water damage, and it's through Tsunami, which is a very rare element in the Final Fantasy games. There are a few random elements. There's like, in Final Fantasy VII, there's a sound element from one of Cloud's Limit Breaks. Um, what do they call it? They called it something. I don't remember the name of it right now. But there are some really random elements. And water, you, you would think it'd be more common. It's not. Um, in Final Fantasy X, they introduced water as one of the main magic black spells, which was pretty cool. So there was fire, ice, lightning, and water as the four black magic spells, which was kind of a fun addition in 10. <laughs> so that's Ashura, and that's Leviathan. Once you defeat Leviathan, I think, I don't know if you need to do Odin first before Bahamut. I tend to always get all the summons, so I usually get Odin anyway before doing Bahamut, but I don't know if it's actually a requirement. 
Is Edge still dead? Oh my, Edge, wake up. It's so funny, the idea that they're like dragging him behind the whole group. Well, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed looking at every summon that you can get in this game. And hopefully these descriptions get you a good way to find them yourself. All right, thank you, bye.